What's going on, duelists? It's your boy Nick, bringing you today on the channel an update to my Spriggan's deck list, and this is going to be post Age of Overlord, which just had their sneak peek this weekend at time of recording. And in that set, there was actually a brand new wave of cards based on Horus, or more specifically, his four sons. And I wanted to build an update to my deck list featuring these Horus cards because I think that they helped Spriggan's in a lot of ways that. I think people might not consider and i know lately a lot of people have been downplaying the horse cards initially they were super hyped and lately a lot of people are saying that they're bad or they're bricks or they're not as good as they thought and that might be true for the decks that are currently in the format um i know a lot of uh, people have been experimenting with tier limit horse and they have mixed feelings about it but honestly i think horse is better suited in a deck that can actually utilize and make better use of the cards you're discarding for the engine um i know phantom Knight horse is also really strong but spriggan's falls into that category as well because there's a lot of really unique synergies there and that's why i wanted to bring you guys this update post agov and yeah um for those of you new to the channel welcome my name's nick we do Yu-Gi-Oh content mainly focused around rogue and casual decks alike if that's the kind of Yu-Gi-Oh that you're interested in then i highly encourage you to subscribe to the channel like the video comment down below on what you think we're currently working our way to 1500 subscribers of which we just surpassed 1100 not that long ago and i need your help to get there so if you're watching this right now subscribe and like the video that helps the algorithm you know continue showing off my content throughout the community and it only does you know just benefits me in the long run and helps me continue to providing you guys with really cool and unique content like what you're about to see here today so with that being said and the intro out of the way we're gonna start off with the monster lineup first uh this is a 44 card deck list um, like I said, this is post Agov, and uh, yeah, we're gonna jump right into it. So we're gonna start with the monsters of which we are playing a playset of Spriggan's Rocky. In my opinion, he's still one of the best Spriggan's monsters in the main deck. Upon normal or special summon, he gets to target a Great Sand Sea Gold Golganda, which is their field spell, or uh, Spriggan's monster in your graveyard, except himself, and then add it to the hand. So what's interesting about Rocky is he's not strictly speaking a starter. He does require a bit of setup of which the field spell does provide and i'll explain how that works as we go through the profile um but that's pretty much all you need to know about rocky uh also all the fire attribute machine type spriggans have the same secondary effect across the board and that effect is that if this card is in your hand field or graveyard you can target a spriggan's exceeds you control and attach it to it as a attach this card to it as a material so all the spriggans monsters can attach themselves to spriggans exceeds as material from anywhere basically which is really really insane so uh like i said so we want to start things off with a play set of rocky then we move along here to two copies of spriggan's kit now spriggan's kit is the only main deck spriggan's monster that is not a fire or machine which is interesting she debuted in the albad structure deck and she doesn't really work like the uh fire machine spriggan's monster she's a little bit unique in the sense that if you have a fusion monster that mentions fallen of albaz um as material on your field or in the graveyard you can special summon the spriggan's kit straight from your hand so she's kind of like an extender of sorts then it states if this card is normal or special summoned you can add to your hand one of your branded spells or traps that is banished um or in your deck or graveyard then place one card from your hand on bottom of the deck so it's a little unfortunate that you don't actually just get the straight plus you do need to take a card from hand and put it back in the deck but sometimes that actually isn't really all that terrible it's kind of like a mulligan of sorts is how i like to, to think about it but the fact that you can search a branded spell trap from anywhere including the banish zone is really really strong so we just played two copies of kit um you know one of the things i wanted to do with this particular list is streamline it and kind of like in some of my older spriggan's profiles we were running like you know i would say more copies of cards that we might not have needed to run in the past and i've been doing a lot of play testing with this deck and i found that you know cutting on some of the ratios actually helps improve consistency overall um but with that being said uh, up next is two copies of spriggan's brothers uh go, jumping back into the fire machine spriggan's uh if this card is sent from the hand or deck to the graveyard you can target a spriggan's monster in grave except himself and special summon it in defense position so this card is really really nice a monster reborn of sorts that again the field spell helps you facilitate combos using brothers 
Uh, Rocky and Brothers combined are two really, really insane cards. There's some unique combos that they can both pull off together. And then just like Rocky, he's got the same secondary effect where uh, if he's in your hand, field, or graveyard, you get the target of Sprig and Xyz, and then attach the Brothers uh, from either of those three places to that Xyz monster as material. Uh, moving on, we play two copies of Spriggan's Branga, the first level 8 monster in the theme. Branga has the effect where, again, he can attach himself to a Spriggan's Xyz as material from the hand, field, or grave, but he's got the unique effect where um, you can banish this card and a Spriggan's monster with a different name from your graveyard to then add a Spriggan's card from deck to your hand. So Branga effectively serves as a roto for the theme, allowing you to search any Spriggan's card that includes uh, spells and traps. So you play two copies of Branga for that particular reason. Then to round out the last Spriggan's level 8, we play one copy of the Spriggan's Captain Sargus. Captain Sargus is pretty cool because while he is um, attached as Xyz material to a Spriggan's Xyz specifically, he gains, uh, that Spriggan's Xyz gains 500 attack, which is pretty nice. In addition to that, um, aside from him having the same ability to attach himself as a, to an Xyz material, or to an Xyz as material, excuse me, from the hand field or graveyard, he also has the ability where during the opponent's turn, quick effects, you can detach a material from an Xyz monster you control to then target a face-up card in the field and destroy it. So Sargus basically allows you, he functions as like removal, which is really strong, by detaching a material from any Xyz you control, even if it's not a Spriggan's one, which I think is really nice. So you just play one copy of Captain Sargus, and that actually rounds out all the Spriggan's names that we're running in the main deck. Now jumping into some, um, you know, tech cards, we do play two copies of Therion King Regulus. This card is very easily utilized in this deck because all, most of the Spriggan's, with the exception of Kit, happen to be machine monsters. In addition to that, one of the uh, Spriggan's Xyz monsters, Champion Sargus, allows you to search either Spriggan's or Therion cards from deck to hand, so it's very easy to get Regulus into rotation and provide this deck with, you know, a much needed Omni Negate, which is something that they didn't previously have, so two copies of Regulus in this list is obviously really strong. Now, uh, to the bread and butter, which is, I'm sure, what you guys are all here to see, the Horus cards, of which we start off with a playset of Imseti, Glory of the Horus. Um, I went to my local sneak peek this weekend, and I was able to secure a playset of this card. And I, like I said, th these cards were initially very hyped, and lately I know a lot of YouTubers have been kind of downplaying them. And I think they're correct to do so, because these cards, while they are crazy, there's not a current deck in the meta that really abuses these or, or uses them well. Um, but that doesn't mean that there isn't decks in this game that don't benefit from these cards, uh, Spriggans being one of them. So let me explain what uh, the Horus, the four sons of Horus do, the first one being Imseti. So it is a level 8 dark spellcaster monster with 3000 attack and 1800 defense, and it reads as follows. If you control King Sarcophagus, and we'll get to what that is in a minute, you can special summon this card from your graveyard. So one thing that I, I want to preface already off the bat is that uh, the four individual uh, mon Horus monsters have that same clause. Or as long as you have King Sarcophagus on field, they can all special summon themselves from the graveyard for free. And that is on a non-activated effect, so it does not start a chain, which is even crazier when you think about it. Um, so they all share that same ability across the board. But Imsteady, the reason why you play three of it specifically is because Imsteady is the best one to draw or open. And the reason for that is you can send two cards from your hand uh, to the graveyard, including this card, and that is cost. So basically, Imsteady pitch himself and another card in your hand. Then you add a King Sarcophagus from the deck to your hand. Then you draw one card. So yes, it's a neg initially because you go neg minus two. But if it resolves, you search the King Sark and, and you get a draw on top of it to boot, which is really, really strong. Then if that wasn't crazy enough, um, if another card or cards you control leaves the field by an opponent's card effect, while this card is in the monster zone, except during the damage step, you can send one card on the field to the graveyard. So Imseti is absolutely insane in this list, in my opinion. Not only does he help get a free level 8 on board with relative ease, it, the fact that he's 3,000 helps you, you know, push for game, uh, and the fact that he's just a starter. He helps get you into the engine, which is just really, really strong. Uh, in addition to that, like I said, the effect that while he's on the board, if any other cards uh, uh, leaves the field by an opponent's card effect, the fact that I can just non-target, non-destroy, just send any card on field to grave is just absolutely invaluable so obviously you want to max out on a playset of Imseti glory of the horus like i said this is a secret rare from age of overlord um and i was fortunate enough to secure a playset of up next we play one duomatef blessing of horus one happy guidance of horus and one uh cubenicef 
Protection of Horus. Sorry about the pronunciations, hopefully I'm not butchering them too bad. But these are the uh, remaining sons of Horus, obviously Mseti being the first. Then you have Dumatev, Happy, and uh, Kubenisef. All four of them, including Mseti, which I might as well just put back over here. All four of them have the same summoning condition, where if we control the King Sarcophagus, they all special summon themselves from the graveyard for free, just giving you free rank 8 fodder, you know, which Spriggins is a deck that definitely utilizes rank 8s. Um, but aside from that, they all have their own unique effects. So, Duomatef, Blessing of Horus, uh, states that uh, he gains a 1200 attack and defense for each Horus monster you control. That includes himself, so he can get pretty large. Then it states, if another card or cards you control leaves the field by an opponent's card effect, while this card's in your monster zone, except during the damage step, you can draw cards equal to the number of monsters with different names in your main monster zone. So one thing that the Horus monsters all share is that they each have an effect that triggers whenever a card or cards we control leaves the field by an opponent's card effect. So in the case of Imseti, you get to send a card on the field to Grave. Duomotef allows you to draw cards equal to the number of monsters in your main monster zone, uh, which is crazy. Um, then you have Happy. Happy, again, same summoning condition. Uh, he states that um, if another card or cards you control leaves the field by an opponent's card effect, while this card's in your monster zone, you can target two cards that are banished and or in um, the graveyards, either add both to the hand or shuffle both into the deck. So Happy allows you to get you some recursion, which is nice. And then Kibenesef, uh again, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, but um, if a card or cards you control leaves the field by an opponent's card effect, well, this card's in your main monster zone, uh, you can um, activate this effect this turn. Your opponent's monsters cannot target Horus monsters for attacks. Also, your opponent cannot target Horus monsters on the field with card effects. So Kibenesef offers, well, protection like his name uh, depicts, which is really, really cool. So these are the four sons of Horus. And honestly, this, this package or engine, however you want to call it, I think does wonders for Spriggans. Some might have a different opinion, but I've been doing testing with this, and they solve one of the glaring issues with Spriggans, in my opinion, was the fact that they couldn't put up a monster negate, um, you know, to stop cards like Ash or Nib. And in my opinion, the Horus cards address that wholeheartedly, because there's a slew of rank 8s that you can play that help address those problems and we'll talk about that more when we get to the extra deck but anyway rounding out the monsters uh we just main deck a play set of ash blossom and joy of spring since the format is so diverse right now and you know it's kind of like a free-for-all in terms of like what's relevant as far as the meta is concerned i think ash is just a great you know overall it covers everything that you're going to come across in, in most uh matchups so we, we max out on ash blossom and joy of spring obviously and that rounds out the monsters for this 44 card list now we're going to jump into the spells, of which we have a playset of the Great Sand Sea Gold Goganda. Pretty much the reason why you'd want to play Spriggans in the first place. It is a field spell and it states that all Spriggans exceed monsters on the field gain 1000 attack. So it's a pretty huge stat buff. Then it states, um, you can only use each of the following effects uh, of Gold Goganda once per turn. It states if you control most Spriggans exceed monsters, you can discard a Spriggans card to then special summon a Spriggans exceed from your extra deck. So this field spell effectively helps you cheat out your Spriggans Exceeds monsters without actually properly Exceeds summoning them. Excuse me. Uh, then, you're probably wondering, well, there's no Exceeds materials below it, so how do they work? Well, that's where all the machine uh, type fire attribute Spriggans secondary effects come into play, where they can all attach themselves to a Spriggans Exceeds as material from almost anywhere. Um, then, the field spell has a secondary effect where if a face-up Exceeds monster you control leaves the field by a card effect, that includes your own card effect, by the way, um, you can uh, target a monster your opponent controls, it cannot attack for the rest of this turn, even if this card leaves the field. So, overall, the Gogoganda is pretty much the anchor that holds the deck down. Um, it's the card you really want to see in, in almost any scenario. And because of that, we play a, a lot of different ways to search it, both in and out of Archetype. So we're going to start off with the next spell, which is Spriggan's Watch. We play three of this. Now, Watch has always been a, a very interesting card to me in terms of card design, because depending on if you have Gold Goganda already, its effect actually changes. So it reads as follows. You get to add a Great Sand Sea Gold Goganda from the deck to your hand. So it's effectively a terraforming, uh, three, three more copies of it. However, if the Great Sand Sea Gold Goganda is already in your field zone, then you can apply the following effect instead. And that effect is you get to add a Spriggan's monster from deck to hand. And if you do, you send a Spriggan's monster from your deck to the graveyard. So if you don't have the field spell, it's terraforming. And then if you do have the field spell, it's both a Rota and a Foolish Burial all in one card. It still continues to blow my mind that, that a card like this exists. But obviously, 
as crazy as this is, you want to max out on this in any Spriggan's variant that you decide to build. Then we follow that up with three copies of Spriggan's Booty. This is a continuous spell that states, uh, if a face-up exceeds monster you control leaves the field by a card effect, that includes your own, you can target an effect monster your opponent controls, and neither player can activate that effect monster's effects on field this turn. Then it has a secondary effect where you can send this face-up card uh, to the graveyard to then uh, activate a Great Sansi Gol Golganda directly from your deck or grave. So Booty is effectively three more copies of Terraforming, or it can also recur the Golganda from Graveyard as well. But definitely you also want to max out on this, simply because you need to see that field spell. The field spell is very, very important in this deck. Moving on though, we played three copies of Tally Ho Spriggans. This is part of the support they recently got out of Photon Hypernova. Uh, it's a quick play spell that states uh, when this, you activate this card, you can also detach up to three materials from monsters you control. That would be Xyz materials. Um, and then you get to add a Spriggans monster from deck to hand. Then if you detached any monsters or any material at activation, you can special summon that many Spriggans monsters from your hand or graveyard. So this card's a Rota and like a um, Soul Charge all in one card. It's very, very insane. If that wasn't crazy enough, it does have a secondary effect where if during your main phase, if this card is in your graveyard, you can target an Xyz monster on the field that includes if it's your opponent's Xyz. Uh, you can detach a material from it, and if you do, add this card to your hand. So, Tally Host Brigands is just insane. You definitely want to max out on this card. Helps, you know, with the field swarming capabilities of the deck, as well as increased consistency since you have an additional Rota. Then we play one copy of Branded and High Spirits. This is the branded spell trap that we're searching off of the Spriggans kit. It's a quick play spell. It allows you to reveal a monster in hand, and then you send a level 8 fusion monster from the extra deck to grave with the same type that has 2,500 attack or defense. Uh, then uh, you can apply the following effect, which is optional. You can discard the revealed monster, and if you do, add a Fallen of Albaz or one monster that um, lists that card in its text in the deck to your hand. So it's pretty much, uh, you reveal a Machine Spriggans to then send the Sprint, the Iron Dash Dragon from deck to grave. And then if you want, you can discard that Spriggans, then search kit, uh, which is really, really cool. So that's how that works as a one of. Then we play a playset of the King's Sarcophagus. Uh, you know, what if I told you that while Spriggans was uh, scouring the Sand Sea, searching for Albaz and Ecclesia, they stumbled on this sarcophagus instead. Um, this is brand new out of Age of Overlord, continuous spell, and this is what the Imseti Glory of Horus allows you to search. And this card is really, really crazy. It states that Horus monsters you control cannot be destroyed by card effects that do not target them. So it offers your Horus monsters protection. Then it says you can send one card from your hand to the graveyard as cost to then send a Horus monster from your deck to the grave. You can only use this effect of King Sarcophagus up to four times per turn. I'm almost positive this is the only card in the game that lets you do anything that many times per turn, which is hilarious, but it's cool to see it. And then it states uh, once per turn at the start of damage step, if your Horus monster battles an opponent's monster, you can send that opponent's monster to the graveyard. So this card is absolutely incredible for the theme it allows you to facilitate you like pitching like dead cards in hand to foolish barrel your horse monsters and then since you control the sarcophagus all the horse monsters can just special themselves for free in addition to offering them protection and if they battle they can just send anything they battle to the grave at the start of the damage step which is just nuts so you want to max out on a playset of the king sarcophagus in this list uh then rounding out the last two spells one terraforming and one called by Pretty self-explanatory, you just want to find the field spell and call by to help play through hand traps. Now moving on to the traps, of which you play one Spriggan's Interluder. This is nice as a one-off because it is searchable through cards like Branga, and it's effectively an Omni-Negate by bouncing a Spriggan's Xyz you control back to the extra deck, um, which I think is nice as a one-off, uh, pretty cool to have. Then brand new out of Age of Overlord, we do play one copy of Full Armored Exceed. This card is a normal trap that states if an Xyz monster is on the field, you can immediately after this effect resolves, Xyz summon one Xyz monster using monsters you control. So this allows you to Xyz summon during your opponent's turn as long as you have the material necessary. Then it's got another effect where um, <clears throat> you can uh, banish this card from your graveyard to target an Xyz monster you control, and then equip one other Xyz monster um, from your face of field or graveyard to that monster is an equip spell with the following effects. Uh, the equip monster gains attack equal to this card's attack, 
And if the equipped monster would be destroyed by battle or card effects, destroy this card instead. So Full Armored Exceed does some pretty nutty stuff. And there's two new Exceed monsters of which we're playing that help us gain access to this card. And like I said, it just allows us to Exceed someone on the opponent's turn. Something that Spriggans could, couldn't previously do. Uh, then to round out the last three cards in the main deck. Again, this is a 44 card list. We do just play a playset of Infinite Impermanence. Uh, in my opinion, uh, I know we're main decking Ash. But Imperm is also probably the second best hand trap to be playing this format. Just because both Ash and Imperm are so broad, you know, in, in what they can address, that it doesn't matter what matchup you're going against, they're, both of those hand traps are probably going to be pretty useful in some way, shape, or form. So, that rounds out the main deck. Like I said, it's a 44 card list. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Now we're going to jump into the extra deck, of which we are playing the one copy of Sprint, the Iron Dash Dragon. This is what our, we send off of the um, Brandon and High Spirit spell card. Uh, during the end phase of the turn, this card is sent to the Graveyard. You can either special summon or add to hand uh, from your deck either a Fallen of Albaz or a Spriggan's Monster. So obviously we can just you know send this off Brandon and High Spirits, search a kit, and then at end phase we get to e Telly out a Spriggan's Monster from deck, which is really, really nice. Uh, then we play two copies of Spriggan's Merrymaker. This you're usually cheating out with a field spell. Um, although you can make it generically, it just requires two level four monsters. And it states that if this card is special summoned from the extra deck, you can send a Spriggan's Monster from your deck to the graveyard. So it's pretty much a Foolish Burial on Summon. It does have a secondary effect, but in this particular build, it doesn't come up all that much. It states that um, during your opponent's main or battle phase, quick effect, you can banish this card until the end phase. Then if you banish this card with two or more Xyz materials, you can also send a Fusion Monster from your extra deck to grave that lists Fallen of Albaz as material. Again, that second effect doesn't come up all that much. Uh, you mainly use this card for the Foolish effect on Summon, which is crucial to this deck's uh, strategy. Um, but either way, you want to play two Merrymaker, because you usually we use one for your opening combo, and then you want the second for follow-up. Uh, moving on, we play one Time Thief Redoer, which at this point should just be an Honorary Spriggans, in my opinion. We play one Abyss Dweller, as a, just a generic rank 4. Abyss Dweller addresses a lot of decks this format. I'm specifically thinking of like um, Unchained, as well as Tier Limit. Now that Cash Tier is no longer in contention because of the um, Arise Heart ban, I know a lot of people have been experimenting with Tier, and Dweller just hoses that matchup. I mean, you just blind Dweller going first, and they pretty much can't play, which is great. And same thing with Unchained. They have a pretty hard time trying to play around Dweller. So you just play this because it's good against most matchups. And now, moving into some newer stuff from Age of Overlord, we play one Xyz Armor Fortress, followed by one Full Armor Dark Knight Lancer. Both of these are brand new cards out of Age of Overlord, and they um, belong to an archetype called Xyz Armor, which is pretty cool. So we'll talk about Armor Fortress. It's a rank 5 machine monster, water machine, that states uh, once per turn, uh, you can also Xyz summon Xyz Armor Fortress by using a rank 3 or 4 Xyz monster you control as material, transfer materials to this card so effectively you just overlay armor fortress on a rank four since we don't play any rank threes in this deck uh you can just overlay armor fortress on top of an existing rank four you have then it states you can detach any number of material from this card to add armored exceeds cards with different names uh from your deck to your hand equal to the number detached which is really really crazy um so he allows you to search the full armored exceeds trap card that i talked about in the main deck which is really nice, that's the trap that allows you to exceed on the opponent's turn. Uh, then, assuming you pull off the combo right, he won't have material under him, which then allows you to overlay the full armor Dark Knight Lancer on top of the Xyz Armor Fortress. Um, so, let's talk about the Dark Knight Lancer. This is also brand new out of Agov. Um, disregard the summoning material, the three level sevens, you're never making it properly, you're always cheating it out with its listed effect. And that is, you can also, ex once per turn, you can also exceed summon full armor Dark Knight Lancer. By using a rank 5 or 6 Xyz monster, you control as material, transfers materials to this card. This card gains 300 attack for each material and equip card it has. And then once per turn, if you can target an Xyz card in your graveyard, that means um, a card with Xyz in the name, uh, add it, return it to your hand. Then, as an additional effect, this says once per turn, if an equip card becomes equipped to a monster you control, which again, you can facilitate this with the uh, full armored Xyz trap card in the main deck, you can then attach a uh, monster your opponent controls to this card as material. So think of this card like a pseudo relinquish of sorts on a really, really big body with protection because of the full armored exceed uh, trap card effect, which states that if this card would be destroyed by battle or card effect, you pop the equip instead. So overall, a really cool package that is um, well deserved in Spriggans, in my opinion, helps you you know keep playing through hand traps and just pushing, uh, putting pressure on your opponent. Uh, then we do play uh, two copies of the... Um, Gigantic Champion Sargus. 
Uh, he came out during the Photon Hypernova set, and Gigantic Champion Sargus is pretty much the reincarnated version of Spriggan's uh, Champions, or Spriggan's Captain Sargus, excuse me. And this card is pretty much what happened when uh, Sargus beat Regulus in battle on the Disc Coliseum, if you know the lore. It's pretty cool, actually. But Champion Sargus, while not a Spriggan's Exceeds in name, he still belongs to the Spriggan's theme. He just requires two level 8 monsters as material, or you can also overlay this card on top of a Spriggan's Exceeds you control and transfer the materials from that Exceeds to this card. Um, once per turn, you can either add a Ethereum card or a Spriggan's card from the deck to your hand, so he's a searcher. Then it states if a uh, material is detached from a monster on the field, you can uh, target a card in the field and either destroy it or return it to the hand. So overall, Champion Sargus is an amazing boss monster for the theme. Then we play the OG boss monster, the Spriggan Ship X-Blower. Still a really cool rank 8 in my opinion. You can um, choose a zone, detach any number of material from this card, and then pop cards in the zone and adjacent zones um, around it, which is really, really crazy. It's so like an area of effect, uh, which is nice. But one X-Blower is all you need. Then for some rank 8s, we play number 38, Hope Harbinger, Dragon, Titanic, Galaxy. That name is still a mouthful. We play one number 90, Galaxy as Photon Lord. Uh, the Horus package helps facilitate making this early, which helps us play through cards like Ash or Nib, which is really nice. Then we also play one copy of Dingirsu, Orchestra of the Evening Star. All three are great rank 8s in their own regard. Each one, you know, is used for a specific purpose, but the fact that this deck can make them easily, especially with the help of Horus, is all that much more impactful. Then to round up the last two cards in the um, extra deck, we play brand new out of Age of Overlord, one Super Star Slayer Typhoon Sky Crisis. This is what's known as the Anti-Zeus. Uh, this card is absolutely incredible in my opinion. Um, you can special summon this card during the turn or the turn after two or more monsters, um, were summoned from the extra deck, uh, which is like just nuts. And then um, you just exceed summon this card by using one monster you control with the highest attack. So that doesn't even have to be an exceeds monster. You could literally normal summon anything. And if your opponent had summoned two or more monsters from the extra deck previous turn, you just slap this on top of your summon monster. And it's got a floodgate like effect where uh, monsters, while this exceeds summon uh, monsters on the field, Neither player can activate the effects of monsters with 3,000 or more attack. Then it states, once per turn, you can detach a material from this card to return one monster on the field to the hand. So, this is just really uh, great to utilize for going second. You know, um, helps you just break boards and push through disruption, which is really, really crazy. Um, overall, I think this card is just amazing for Spriggans, in my opinion. And then to round out the last card in the extra is obviously the one copy of Divine Arsenal Zeus Sky Thunder. Again, another really cool staple. For this deck since it's so exceeds focused but before we wrap things up uh let's talk about the side deck briefly again the side deck's up to personal preference this is what i'm choosing to run though we are playing a play set of lava golems just to help for going second and board breaking spriggans is not a deck that needs their normal summon so the restriction that lava golem puts on you after it's been used doesn't really bother us all that much then we have a play set of book of eclipse again just for going second um helps address established boards or baits and a gate at minimum which is really really strong then we also play a playset of Xyz Import. This is a really cool quick play spell that states you target an Xyz monster you control, any monster the opponent controls with attack less than or equal to it, you attach that opponent's monster to that monster you control's Xyz material, which is crazy. Then for our back row matchups, we just play a playset of Cosmic Cyclones and a spicy tech um, to round out the side deck. We are playing uh, triple copies of Grave of the Super Ancient Organism. This is a continuous trap that's pretty much a floodgate it states all level 6 or higher special summon monsters on the field cannot declare attacks or activate their effects. Uh, yes, I'm aware that we do play a lot of level 8s in this deck, but at the same time, most of the time those level 8s are just there for fodder for rank 8 plays. Which, if we can get to a rank 8 monster, the restriction of this card doesn't bother us because this only counts for uh, special summon monsters that have levels, not um, exceeds, which is really, really cool. So I think we can utilize this card pretty well. So that's going to round out the um, deck profile for Spriggans post Age of Overlord. Let me know what you guys thought in the comments down below. And uh, like I said, stay tuned for more awesome content coming your way post Age of Overlord. Subscribe so you don't miss out on any more of my uploads. And with that being said, this is Nick hitting that end phase. Peace.